Today I'm going to talk about the differences between Leaf Spy and Leaf Spy Pro. Welcome back to the channel and thanks for being here. Oftentimes I see people in Facebook groups looking at buying an electric vehicle, specifically a Nissan Leaf, and they always talk about an app called Leaf Spot. A lot of people have questions about what it is and what it does. Hopefully after today's video, I'll give you a little bit of a primer into what the different versions are and what you can do with each one. First of all, what do you need? you need a little device called a dongle. It looks like this. It plugs into what's called the OBD port of your car. It stands for Onboard Diagnostics. I'll post a link to this specific one in the description section below. And essentially this little device hooks into your onboard computer and tells you certain information about your car. This specific dongle is a Bluetooth connected dongle, so it's gonna work on pretty much any device and be really simple to use. It's essentially plug and play. Next thing you need obviously is the app. The app works on both Android or iOS, so depending on the device you use, make sure you download the correct version. There's currently three versions of Leaf Spy listed on the Google Play Store. Leaf Spy Lite, Leaf Spy, and Leaf Spy Pro. Specifically, Leaf Spy, the one listed at $12.99, is currently for versions of the Nissan Leaf listed between 2011 and 2017. For 2018 or above, for the advanced features, you will actually need to upgrade to the Leaf Spy Pro app at $20. The first thing I'm going to say is that if you're in the research phase of buying a Leaf, you're probably going to be fine with the Leaf Spy Lite version of the app as the features you're looking for specifically relate to battery health and you can get the information that you're looking for just with the Leaf Spy Lite version of the app. If you are already a current Nissan Leaf owner and you want to tap into a few more of those advanced features, then absolutely the Leaf Spy Pro version of the app will be for you. So what is the first thing you're gonna do? Well, first of all, you're gonna plug this OBD dongle into the OBD port on your car. And yes, that was a little bit of a mouthful to say. On a Nissan Leaf, they're often either in the fuse box here or sometimes under this dashboard component. In my 2015 Nissan Leaf SL, the OBD port is actually located directly under the steering column. Plug it in it is quite simple as the shape only goes one way. So line it up. And plug it in. This particular dongle does have a light on it to indicate that there is power to the dongle and that you've installed it correctly. This car is actually turned off when the dongle is on so you can see that there is power to it at all times however you don't actually get any readings from the car until you turn it on. Just as a word of caution it does not connect 100% of the time the first time unfortunately. I found that I had better success doing it in this particular order. Step one, plug in the dongle. Step two, turn on the car. Step three, turn the app on. What we're gonna look at first is Leaf Spy Lite. So once you have the app open, it's gonna load up like this saying that it's connecting and a green status indicator will tell you that you're successfully connected. When you first load the app, there won't be any information here. However, I've used the app before, so it just gives you the last status or last update that was provided on the app before I disconnected. I'm gonna split the screen in half just so it's a little bit easier to view on YouTube here. So once connected, you'll find that all the information here essentially zeroes out and loads up as it reconnects to the computer. You'll start seeing things like state of health loading up and the VIN number and the odometer count will reset. The level one and level two charges will tell you uh, will reset. So the number one thing that most people are looking at if they're looking at buying a Nissan Leaf is the state of health or the SOH of the battery. You'll see that mine's currently listed at 83.14%. The other thing you wanna pay attention to is how the vehicle has been charged over the lifespan of the vehicle. If you're not sure what I mean by level one, level two, or level three charging, have a look at my previous video that explains the different levels of charging. The reason that this is important is because a high level of quick charging or level three charging has had an adverse effect to the state of health and the advanced degradation of batteries over time. So that would be important to know. And you may find a correlation between a low odometer reading and a low state of health reading if the number of quick charges are excessively high. The other thing listed here is the SOC or state of charge. This is exactly how much power is left in your battery from the onboard computer's point of view. 
This will be slightly different from what is listed on the dashboard as you're driving around. In most cases, it's gonna be much lower than what your dashboard reads. The reason for this is the dashboard number actually uses an algorithm to show the state of charge more like a fuel tank, as in you have roughly this percentage left in order to go. That does not mean that the battery capacity is actually at that charge state. I know that gets into a little bit of the techie details and I'm sorry if that's too much. I'm just trying to be a little bit more comprehensive. So the other thing listed on the right hand side is this graph. Currently it says 13 MV. Quite honestly, I don't even fully understand it, but I'm gonna try to explain it from my perspective. And if I'm absolutely out to lunch and wrong, please, please correct me in the comment section below so that future viewers of this video can see the correct information. So your battery is actually not just a single cell battery. It's made up of multiple cells. I believe the Nissan Leaf is made up of 96 different cells. And as the battery is used, the cells are used in different strengths and different capacities. That's not good for the battery. They want to have the batteries are going to be better off if they're all at a relatively even charge at all times. This graph will tell you what the levels of the cells are, as well as whether or not they are currently trying to top up or balance from the other cells. The blue will just tell you what the status of those cells is, and the red indicates that it's actually trying to balance those particular cells. If you think about it like filling up an ice cube tray, you start filling water at one end of the tray and it then goes and balances out the other components or other cups within that tray. If you tilt it, it fills them up a little bit more and maybe balances the water as you fill it as opposed to filling up one side of it first and then the other and then the other. So the battery is going to work a lot better if it's balanced across the board. This is another thing that you're going to want to look at when you're researching purchasing your Nissan Leaf because if the batteries are incapable of balancing themselves, there indicates a little bit of a problem and you may be in for an advanced degradation of your battery health. So just to indicate that point a little bit further, you can see by these different graphs how the different use of the battery actually affects the cells within that battery. So regular acceleration versus regenerative braking or pedal to the metal flooring it. And then just a driving at a constant speed of 50 kilometers per hour, all of this being on a flat road. We're gonna go on to compare Leaf Spy Lite versus Leaf Spy Pro. The first thing you're gonna notice between the two is the difference in the home screens. So the one on the left, this is the main screen that opens up in Leaf Spy Lite when you first open up the app. The one on the right is what Leaf Spy Pro looks like when you first open it up. So the layout of information first and foremost is very different. Now, you get a lot of the same information on the home screen, but you get a few more features included on the home screen. And then of course, as you flip through the different screens, you'll get a few more of them as well. So once again, I'm gonna split the screens and put top and bottom on left and right, just so I can blow them up a little bit and show them to you in a little bit more detail. The state of charge is still listed here. Currently it's listed at 95.7. So obviously I took this on a different day than the Leafs by light. And the 85.1% actually represents your state of health. On the bottom left hand side, you can see 18.5 kilowatt hours is remaining. This is essentially what is left in the charge. Now it currently shows 66.9 miles of range remaining until you get to 5% state of charge and an average of 4.0 miles per kilowatt hour of use. This is the calculation that electric vehicles use to sort of coincide with the miles per gallon or liters per hundred kilometers type of calculation for fuel economy. Now I'm in Canada, so I use metric. So the nice thing is, is that I can go into the settings pretty quickly and uh, change those miles to kilometers. Now on this particular day, I did not change the temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So there is a little bit of a mix here. So if you wanna hit the menu button of the app and get some additional features, I actually find the menu a little bit hidden in Least by Light and Least by Pro. And it's even a little bit hard to press sometimes because the button is so close to the edge of the screen. The menu button is actually these three lines in the top right hand corner of the app ones that are blinking yellow right now, you'll get this menu here. That's also how you're gonna exit the program. If you don't actually exit out of the app, it does not close and it will run in the background. This is because there are certain features like the graphs or the state of charge 
and tripometers and trip logs and whatnot that need the information ongoing. And so it will run in the background until you exit out of the program properly. That would be going through this menu button and hitting the exit button. Now, in order to change certain features of the app, you're gonna hit that menu button and then hit settings. That's gonna bring you to a menu that looks much like this. On Lease by Pro, you can actually also use this uh, these settings to change your automatic door lock features as well as your backup alarm. I don't recommend disabling the backup alarm even though that is what is promoted through this app as a feature that can be done. That is a safety feature there for a reason because your car is so quiet when you're backing up, pedestrians aren't aware that the car is actually moving. Now that I've got this switched over to kilometers, you can see roughly 107.7 kilometers until I get to 5% state of charge. And as I drive, the 18.5 kilowatt hours remaining, of course, will decrease. If you leave this app open and you're driving, it will automatically calculate your trip. And this little timer in the top right will start accumulating and it will be a live feed of your battery. So as you can see on this screen, I've used 605 watt hours. Now Leaf Spy Pro obviously has a lot more features built into it. It's also got a lot more graphs that you can pay attention to. With GPS, it'll track the elevation you're driving on, the speed at which you're traveling and graph that accordingly. There's also day and night settings for all the graphs. That is based on the sensor of your phones. So that's my brief rundown of Leaf Spy Lite versus Leaf Spy Pro. I know I did not get into all the different features of Leaf Spy Pro and quite honestly, I, I think that's just something that each individual has to play with. You can totally Totally nerd out on Leaf Spy Pro as there are a lot of features. In my personal opinion, like I said, if you're just researching purchasing a Leaf, absolutely just stick with Leaf Spy Lite. You're probably going to get enough information for you to make that decision on that purchase. If you already own a Nissan Leaf and you just want to sort of tap into a little bit more of that analytical side, then absolutely upgrade to Leaf Spy Pro. It'll give you a lot more features to play around with and who are we kidding? More buttons are always better. If you do decide to upgrade to Lease by Pro, I just give you a word of caution. There's a lot of information here and a lot of access to your car's onboard computer. Very similar to that that a mechanic would have had you actually taken the car into a shop for servicing. So with that said, just be careful, but otherwise have fun, play around with the information and see what you can actually do. So that's it for me for today. Thanks for watching. If you got some good information from this video, if you could do me a favor and hit the like button and leave me some feedback in the comment section below, I'd love to hear what you got out of the video and how you decided to apply it in your everyday life. If you'd like to see more videos regarding electric vehicles, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next one. Other than that, thanks again for watching and have yourself a great day.